Hi friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Lauren, you may also call me Lo, and today I'm bringing you the third installment of my Akatar summary series. And in this one, I'm summarizing A Court of Wings and Ruin, also known as Akawar by Sarah J. Mass. This is the final book in the first kind of trilogy of this series. The next book is A Court of Silver Flames, and that is a spin-off book from Nesta, Elaine's sister's perspective. I do plan to summarize that book as well, but because the fifth book hasn't been announced yet, I think I'm going to hold off on making that video until closer to the release date of the fifth book. But if you'd like to see it sooner, please leave a comment and let me know. I'd be happy to do it sooner if that's what people want. As usual, I'm going to preface my summary by saying that if you haven't read this book and you want to read this book, please click out of this video. I'm going to spoil the entire thing. These videos are really for people who've already read this book and want to kind of refresh their memory about different points or want to remember the book, and also for people who may have read this book and delayed reading A Court of Silver Flames. This is just going to be kind of a recap video of the entire plot of this book. So without further ado, let's get into the summary. Akawar opens with a flashback to the war from Rhysand's point of view. So he's walking through a battlefield two years prior to the construction of the wall, and he's basically walking among all of these dead bodies after this battle has taken place, and he's looking for Cassian and Asriel's bodies. Every time he sees an Illyrian wing, he kind of picks through the corpses to see if he can identify them, obviously, as Cassian or Asriel, and he keeps checking different ones and finally realizes that they're not among the dead. That is the prologue to Aquawar, and then we open with the first chapter in the Spring Court. So Feyre is painting in Tamlin's Manor, and she's comparing her kind of recent art, which is happy and kind of colorful and cheerful, I guess, to her true feelings, which are very, very negative. She's also just kind of remembering what happened to her sisters, Elaine and Nesta, the night that they met the King of Highburn. Thinking about this, she gets more and more and more upset, and eventually she like breaks a paintbrush in half with her powers and hides the evidence of the broken paintbrush before Lucian and Tamlin come in to check on her. After this broken paintbrush incident, Tamlin, Lucian, and Feyre meet with Ianthi, who pretty much wants to bury the hatchet after she led Feyre's sisters to the King of Highburn. While Tamlin continues to kind of blindly believe and stay loyal to Ianthi, Lucian and Feyre are not really buying her lies. So Lucian, at the end of book two, realized that Elaine, Feyre's sister, is his mate, and he now feels a certain sense of like loyalty and obligation to her. So because of their distrust of Ianthi, Feyre and Lucian start to kind of question Ianthi, and Tamlin kind of tries to smooth over that argument and move on to discussing his courts, the Spring Court's new alliance with Highburn. So as it turns out, to get Feyre back, Tamlin made a deal with the King of Highburn and allowed the King of Highburn to bring his forces into the Spring Court. Feyre expresses concerns about having the army of the King of Highburn in the Spring Court, especially as it pertains to the people who are living in the Spring Court, and Tamlin assures her that he is going to be moving everyone to the eastern border to protect them. Tamlin also informs them that two Highburn kind of soldiers plus Jurian will be coming to the Spring Court the following day. Later, Feyre sends information down the mating bond to Resand. She also asks how the inner circle is doing, and Rhysan lets her know that everyone is safe. Their interaction is super, super brief because Feyre is afraid of anyone finding out that she and Rhysan are still mates. The next day, Jurian and two Highburn royals, Prince Dagdan and Princess Brana, who are the niece and nephew of the King of Highburn, arrive at the Spring Court. 
they discuss creating a party to go explore the wall and especially examine the holes in the wall that allow people to travel from Prithian to the mortal lands and vice versa. Feyre convinces Tamlin to let her join this expedition and basically takes every possible opportunity to sow distrust among Tamlin, Lucien, and Ianthi. She also tries to sow distress between Tamlin and his kind of sentries and subjects. Using her Daymati powers, she manages to create complete chaos in the Spring Court, leaving the majority of people without any respect for Tamlin. Eventually, Feyre creates this plan to escape during a following expedition, and as she's kind of preparing to make her escape, she sees Ianthi kind of forcing herself on Lucien and decides to come to his aid even though it's going to ruin her escape plan. After using her Daymati powers to teach Ianthi a lesson, they then run into the prince and princess of Hybern, and a full-on battle starts with Lucian and Feyre on one side and the Hybern Royals on the other. During this battle, Feyre and Lucian learn from the Hybern Royals that they have been kind of poisoning Feyre and Lucian over a very long time with this drug called Feybane, which weakens and eventually nullifies their powers. And the reason that the Hybern Royals have been doing this is so that they can eventually overpower Feyre and Lucian. After a major struggle, Feyre and Lucian manage to kill the two Hybern Royals, and Feyre uses her Daymati powers to basically force Ianthi to tell everybody that Feyre killed the royals in self-defense and fled. As Feyre is getting ready to finally make her escape, Lucian asks her if he can come with her. Having realized that Tamlin sold the spring court out to Hybern and because he wants to find Elaine. Together, they go through this tunnel that leads to the Autumn Court, which is kind of their best bet because the other tunnels lead to Under the Mountain and the Summer Court, where Feyre is wanted for basically treason because she stole the Book of Breathings from the High Lord of the Summer Court in Book 2. As Feyre and Lucien are traveling, they start to realize that their powers, which were weak when they were battling the Prince and Princess of Hybern, are now pretty much gone, and they end up walking through the Autumn Court on foot. They're doing their best to stay kind of under the radar, incognito, if you will, but one day they run into Eris and the rest of Lucien's brothers. Eris is the heir to the Autumn Court, and he's also the horrible guy that Moore was betrothed to, and because she didn't want to marry him, she lost her virginity to Cassian. In doing that, she sort of ruined the alliance between Kier, her father, and the sort of ruler of the Court of Nightmares, and the High Lord of the Autumn Court. In retaliation, Moore's family tortured her and stripped her naked and basically left her on the border of the Autumn Court, with a note nailed to her body saying that she was now Eris's problem, and Eris basically just ignored it and left her to die in the woods. So that's who we're working with when Feyre and Lucien run into him at the Autumn Court. So the situation is not good, and the brothers basically pursue Feyre and Lucien, who have to fight to escape. When they finally do, Eris and his brothers basically go out of their way to continue to hunt them down. But Feyre and Lucien manage to get to the Winter Court on foot, and they're crossing this really large frozen lake. And they're both frozen and miserable and generally at risk of dying when they spot Eris on the side of the lake. Another huge battle ensues, and despite their kind of minimal powers, Feyre is able to summon fire to fend Lucian's brothers off, but fire happens to be this power that only the kind of rulers of the Autumn Court and their family possess, and it is the kind of gift that was bestowed upon her by Lucian's father when she was remade. In the middle of the battle, Cassian and Azrael arrive, and Eris and the rest of Lucian's brothers kind of realize that Feyre is the High Lady of the Night Court. So the brothers finally back off, kind of realizing that Feyre possesses high status. 
From there, Cassian carries Feyre and Asriel carries Lucien out and back to the Night Court. At the Night Court, several things have been happening. First, Nesta and Elaine have been staying there, kind of under the protection of Rhysand and the Night Court, and they're unhappy, everyone's unhappy, and it's all bad vibes. <laughs> Nesta is absolutely furious with everything and everyone, and Elaine is just kind of depressed and like this kind of empty shell of a person. On the bright side, Cassian and Azrael are both healed and back to normal after the very significant injuries that they both sustained in Highburn at the end of book two. Rhysand has been busy trying to make a plan for the upcoming war with Highburn, and he's been trying to get all of the High Lords of Prithian together in a meeting so that they can unite against Highburn. Feyre meets with Rhysand and the Inner Circle, and they try to kind of hatch a plan to get Nesta to help them fix the holes that are currently in the wall because she was made by the cauldron and she should be able theoretically to fix something that was also made by the cauldron. Feyre is very very hesitant to ask Nesta for anything but she finally does and Nesta actually agrees to help as long as someone teaches her how to repair the wall. Well, Cassian has been trying to get Nesta to train with him for a very long time to absolutely no avail. She starts to train with Amran, who is going to kind of teach her how to repair the wall. Meanwhile, Feyre, who recently discovered that she has some of Tamlin's ability to shapeshift and therefore has the ability to kind of obtain wings, works with Cassian and Azrael to try to learn how to fly. One day, Rhysand and Feyre go to the library to try to get some more information about the wall, and Feyre suggests that they try to recruit the bone carver to their cause. The next day, early in the morning, Feyre and Cassian go to the prison to try to talk to the bone carver. <laughs> and in their conversation with the bone carver, Feyre realizes that the boy that she sees the bone carver as isn't just some random boy, but is her and Rhysand's child. Feyre thinks that she might be able to kind of recruit the bone carver to their cause if she promises to allow him to go home via the Book of Breathings. The bone carver explains that the world that he originated from now no longer exists and there's absolutely nothing to go back to. He also kind of makes it clear that he's very, very afraid to be freed from the prison because he's afraid of his two siblings, one of which is the Weaver. And Feyre, if you remember, had a very close encounter with the Weaver in book two when she tried to steal back Rhysand's ring. In the prison, the bone carver feels kind of forgotten by his siblings and therefore safe from them. As Feyre and Cassian are leaving, having made no progress with the bone carver, they mention that they are headed to the Hewn City, otherwise known as the Court of Nightmares, and the bone carver says that he will help them if Feyre can retrieve the Ouroboros mirror from the Court of Nightmares and give it to him. The mirror, which once belonged to the Weaver, is now in possession of Kier, Moore's father. So, <laughs> Feyre, Rhysand, Nesta, Moor, Amran, and Asriel? I think that's everybody. <laughs> Go to the Court of Nightmares to try to recruit Kier and his Darkbringer army to their cause. Kier is reluctant to help them, stating that he actually sympathizes with Highburn's cause because he views both his people and Highburn's people as trapped. Rhysand, kind of as a backup plan, brings in Eris, Lucian's brother, to try to see if Eris and Kier can strike up a deal among themselves. And Kier says he will only help them if he and his court have full access to Valaris. Eris, on the other hand, says that he will urge his father to attend the High Lord's meeting that Rhysand is planning, as long as they will help support his claim to the Autumn Throne. Feyre asks if she can have the Ouroboros mirror, the mirror that the bone carver wants, and Kier says absolutely she can have it, but in order to take it, she must look into it, and everyone who looks into it loses their mind. <laughs> For now, Feyre decides to leave it behind. 
When they get back to the Night Court, Moore is absolutely furious, both that Resand made a deal with Eris and that the Court of Nightmares will now have full access to Valaris, which is sort of her sanctuary and safe place away from her awful family and her awful past. The potential deal with the Bone Carver is also finally discussed for the first time, and Amran explains that the Bone Carver cannot leave the prison without being bound to a body or becoming Fae, and that he's very, very unlikely to do that. Amran, for the first time, also explains that this is how she escaped the prison, and that if she were to kind of unbind herself from her Fae body, she would become her old self, but she would pretty much forget everyone and everything that happened since she was bound to her fate body. As they're kind of debriefing everything, Elaine, who has kind of taken to speaking in riddles, says that she hears something. And the whole group thinks that's really weird because Feyre has kind of put this wind around the group as they're talking so that nobody can hear their conversation from the outside. Feyre has a healer come see Elaine because she's worried about her. And the healer says that Elaine is physically fine, but she couldn't enter Elaine's mind, which probably has something to do with her having been made by the cauldron. The healer suggests that Lucien talks to Elaine because their two souls are connected due to them being mates. Lucien, during his stay at the night court, has only been given one rule, and that's that he can't talk to Elaine. Nesta has been enforcing that rule very, very strictly. However, after what the healer said, Feyre gives Lucien permission to finally talk to Elaine and try to get through to her, which absolutely infuriates Nesta and also doesn't really work. Lucien and Resand are responding to a volley of letters from the High Lords of Prithian, most of whom have agreed to meet, but the location and kind of circumstances of the meeting are up for debate. Pretty much no one can agree kind of on the logistics of this meeting, and Lucien has been working really hard to try to find kind of the perfect neutral place. Meanwhile, Amran and Nesta are kind of training Nesta's powers. Feyre is learning how to fly and is also spending a lot of time in the library trying to research the wall so that she can help Amran and Nesta with their training. And she's also looking for information about the Ouroboros mirror. During one of their training sessions, Feyre is feeling super, super discouraged because flying is a lot harder than she thought it would be, and she's struggling super hard. And Asriel tells her that Resand once went and visited Miriam and Dracon on their kind of secret island. And if you don't remember, in book two, it was explained that Miriam and Dracon live on this island that no one knows about, and humans and fey live there in harmony. There, Resand learned that Miriam had freed her people and had led them to this island with Dracon's help. However, during that process, Miriam was stabbed and a cartographer named Nefel saved her even though her wings were small and deformed. So when Reese returned from his visit to see Miriam and Dracon, he brought back this Nefel philosophy that basically says that their greatest weakness can also be their greatest strength and that the most unlikely person can alter the course of history. This story kind of inspires Feyre to continue learning how to fly, even though it is very, very difficult and beginning to seem impossible to her. One day when Feyre and Nesta are doing research in the library, they're ambushed by Hibern soldiers, which they call ravens. In their scramble to find safety, they hide in this large pit in the center of the library. And in this pit, something large and evil is rumored to live. While they're down there, Feyre makes a bargain with the monster that lives in the pit. And she basically tells it that she will bring it company if it kills the ravens who are after them. The monster, whose name is Bryaxis, is very, very lonely, and so it agrees to help. Shortly after the library attack, Reese learns that the summer court is under attack. So the crew travels there, and when they get there, they realize that no one else has come to help, and that the summer court is essentially being slaughtered. 
Moore and Feyre fight their way through the palace, killing any Hybern soldier that they come across. At the same time, Rhysand is trying to find the King of Hybern among the chaos of this battle. When Rhysand finally finds the king, he goes to attack him, but it's just an illusion. After the fight is over, Feyre goes to Tarquin, who is the High Lord of the Summer Court, to try to convince him to join them in their fight against Hybern. But Tarquin is still super angry at Feyre for having betrayed him and for having stolen the Book of Breathings in Book 2, and so he refuses. It's finally established that this meeting with all the High Lords is going to occur at the Dawn Court, and so the time has come and the crew then travels to the Dawn Court for this High Lords gathering. Thankfully, all of the High Lords show up with Baron, who's the High Lord of the Autumn Court, and Tamlin making kind of dramatic entrances. Tamlin's intentions are repeatedly questioned, and he continually says that he's there to help, while simultaneously just insulting Feyre throughout the entire meeting. Together, the High Lords agree that they all need to be taking Feybane Antidote, so that they don't lose their powers and don't succumb to Feybane, and they all agree that the Spring Court should be evacuated. During the meeting, Feyre notices that Lucian's skin is more like golden than all of his brothers, whose skin is more pale, and she also starts to think that he looks a lot like Helion, who is the High Lord of the Dawn Court. She kind of pieces together that Lucian's mother had an affair with Helion, which resulted in Lucian, after the meeting, Nesta warns Feyre that they need to go home because she senses that something really bad is about to happen. As predicted by Nesta, a kind of strong wave of power sweeps through the land, makes Nesta sick, and Rhysand learns that the cauldron has been used to finally take down the wall, separating Prithian from the mortal lands. Now everyone's just preparing for war, and Feyre and Amran go back to the library to talk to the monster Bryaxis to try to recruit it to their cause. The crew also winnows to Grayson's manor. And if you don't remember, Grayson is Elaine's former fiance, or I guess current fiance at the time that this is happening. And they ask Elaine's fiance to basically shelter humans as many as possible because the wall is now down. At the meeting, Jurian shows up, and he basically announces that he is on their side and that he's basically tried to infiltrate Highburn and destroy them from the inside. Jurian also informs everybody that Highburn is planning another attack at the Summer Court the following day. Grayson, who has now realized that Elaine is Fey, and if you don't remember, he absolutely hates Fey, he is completely repulsed by Elaine and basically breaks off their engagement, which devastates her. As predicted by Jurian, Hybern attacks the Summer Court the following day, and in the battle, Cassian gets badly injured. Feyre and Rhysand work to glamour the war camp so that they can ambush the Hybern soldiers. However, belatedly, they realize that the army that they're trying to ambush is not kind of the core army as more and more and more soldiers keep appearing. <laughs> so naturally, Feyre decides to get answers the only way she knows how, and once again sets out to trap the Surreal. But lacking for time, she recruits Elaine to help her find the Surreal and basically uses Elaine's powers to locate it. They meet the Surreal in the place in Prithian called the Middle, and the Surreal tells Feyre that she needs Nesta to both find the cauldron and nullify its powers. Before the Surreal can finish kind of talking to Feyre, Ianthi and two Hybern soldiers show up and basically shoot it. Then they go after Feyre, and Feyre manages to kind of trap them in the weaver's cottage to be eaten by the weaver. As a result of this gesture, the weaver starts to forgive Feyre for having stolen Rhysand's mother's ring 
in book two. Once she's safe, Feyre goes back to the surreal and kind of stays with it while it's dying. In its sort of last moments, the surreal tells Feyre that she was kind to it when absolutely no one else was, and the surreal also gives Feyre this spell to give to Amran. Feyre then communicates what she learned from the surreal to Nesta, and Nesta locates the cauldron. She also opens a link between the cauldron and those who were made by the cauldron, and as a result of that, the King of Highburn is able to abduct Elaine. Feyre uses Yanthi's appearance to basically infiltrate Highburn and save Elaine. She rescues Elaine and Azrael comes to help. During this kind of Highburn camp chaos, Jurian leaves an injured mortal girl behind, but Feyre wants to save her. Seeing no other way to save both this human girl and Elaine, Feyre instructs Asriel to take them and tries to make her own escape. But eventually she gets cornered by Naga hounds and is in pretty much a horrible situation until Tamlin comes and saves her. After all of this, Feyre confronts more again about basically leading Asriel on. And more confides in Feyre that she is attracted to females and doesn't love Asriel that way. As the war is ramping up, Rhys instructs everyone to winnow as many humans to safety as possible. Feyre, meanwhile, returns to the Court of Nightmares to retrieve the Ouroboros mirror. When she finally brings the Bone Carver the mirror, the Bone Carver basically tells her that he never wanted the mirror, and he mostly just wanted Feyre to prove herself so that he could see if she was worthy of his help. As everyone is gearing up for this final battle, Feyre announces that she has recruited the Bone Carver Bryaxis, and the Weaver to their cause. Even with this help, Rhysand is worried that they're very outnumbered. However, Tamlin, Baron, and Grayson show up and announce that they are ready to help. The Cauldron's powers begin to kill a bunch of Illyrian soldiers, and Nesta manages to warn Cassian, and as a result, he isn't killed. Soon, ships show up to help their cause, and we learn that Feyre's father and Dracon are entering the fold. Amran and Feyre finally go to the cauldron to try to nullify it, and Feyre touches the cauldron and is suddenly betrayed by Amran, who doesn't start the spell. Feyre, who's absolutely furious, tries to kill Amran, and Amran explains that the spell that the Surreal gave her was an unbinding spell, meaning that it would return her to her true form. And in that process, she would forget everyone, like she said earlier. But it was also a kind of message, and the Surreal was trying to tell Amran that the only way for them to win this war was for Amran to make that sacrifice. Varian shows up and begs Amran not to do this, but Amran gets into the cauldron and Feyre conducts this spell. While all of this is happening, the King of Highburn kind of takes Feyre and Nesta and Elaine's father captive. Elaine and Nesta team up and actually manage to kill the King of Highburn by decapitating him. As a result of Amran's unbinding, the cauldron breaks and Feyre and Rhysand try to repair it using their combined powers. However, this effort ends up killing Rhysand. The High Lords team up to resurrect Rhysand, and once Rhysand is resurrected, he actually manages to save Amarin from dying. At this point, Lucian finally returns from trying to find the mortal queen Vasa, and Feyre meets with Miriam and Dracon to try to convince them to keep the cauldron on their kind of protected secret island, where it can't be used by any nefarious person. At the very end of the book, Feyre calls a meeting to try to once again establish a treaty between humans and Fey. So that is it for my summary of Akawar by Sarah J. Mass.
Once again, please let me know if you'd like to see a summary of A Court of Silver Flames sooner rather than later. I plan to do it eventually. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing and liking this video. I put one bookish video out every week, sometimes two, if I can pull it off. If you're still here, thank you so much for being here. I always really appreciate it, and I will see you next time.